What's up guys, I'm Heath Pierce, and with just a few days left in the transfer window, we thought we'd get you guys involved in the Silly Season action. You asked and will answer, so get into those comments and give us the transfers you hope happen before the window closes. Now, on to some tweets. First up, we've got two tweets about Dortmund. One, would Dortmund's new signing Isak be a good fit for the team? And will Alexander Isak live up to his new nickname, the next Zlatan? Good questions, and uh, no pressure for the next Zlatan, but the truth is, Dortmund have a proven track record of signing and developing young talent into superstars. The big question here is that Isak is only 17 and he's stepping into a team that has a plethora of young players who already have minutes in the Bundesliga. 18-year-old Pulisic just signed a new three-year deal. Emery Moore is 19 and finding his form. And if you add that to 19-year-old Usman Dembele and Marco Royce, who's a club favorite and entering his prime, you understand quickly that his best chance of getting real playing time is if Dortmund decide to sell Obama Yang for big, big money, which has been rumored in the last few windows. Six foot three, Isak has all the potential in the world, but he's got to get games and playing time with Dortmund's reserve squad just won't cut it. Of course, his move from AIK feels a bit rushed and in my opinion, another season in Al Svenskan would have been best, but of all the clubs that were interested in him, including Real Madrid and Liverpool among others, this is by far the best place for him to flourish into the next Zlatan. And if he gets the playing time we all hope, he could be one of the best young attackers in Europe by the time he hits 20 years old. Our next question is from Bobby Johnson who says, would Griezmann fit in well at United? Is he class or does the quality of teams in La Liga make him seem better than he is? Well, I think Griezmann is a perfect fit to play off of Zlatan, but the question there is if Zlatan will even stay at the club beyond the season. This will, of course, hurt Martial's time and force Rooney likely out of the club in the same year that he broke the United scoring record, which is kind of crazy, but these are the footballing times. We saw Depay flop, and Fellaini isn't really United quality, and Rooney has a ton of miles on his legs, but Griezmann could be the missing link that takes them back to the helm of European football. If they sign Griezmann and Zlatan stays, United will have to switch formations to accommodate him and likely spend some money on a top holding midfielder that will allow Pogba to contribute into the attack with Mkhitaryan and potentially Rashford occupying the wide positions or even the left and right sides of a diamond. First priority for Manchester United to even get Griezmann though, qualify for the Champions League. Our next one is from Giovanni who says, will RB Leipzig manage to keep their players away from Europe's top teams? Well, when you are owned by a billion dollar conglomerate, you don't have to survive on sales of players to make ends meet. Of course, it's more complicated than that, but it is against RB Leipzig's philosophy to have a lot of turnover in the squad. They are in a title race and the club has a vision that lasts far beyond this season. If a guy were to go, the only one I would see moving and not before January ends and maybe not even in the next couple seasons is Navi Keita, who reminds me of a budding version of N'Golo Conte. They can probably fetch a fee of around 15, 20 million euros for young stars like Timo Werner or Emil Forsberg, but Keita Keita has the potential to push that price tag closer to 30 million plus, which could force RB Leipzig to have to listen. Next is from our boy Eddie Serna who says, who should NYCFC get for their third DP spot? Well, Eddie, only God knows who NYCFC are gonna sign as their third DP. They are an NYC club that has every agent around the world trying to get their marquee player into this league and a big market. But if I'm the club though, I'd look further to solidify myself in the NYC market by bringing home Giuseppe Rossi. He's fully fit again, he hasn't scored much on loan at Celta Vigo from Fiorentina, and there are reports that he's received multiple offers from MLS. He isn't the dominant force that he once was when he had 30 caps for the Italian national team, but he is more than capable of dominating at the MLS level and bringing in a local fan base. I played with him in the Steve Nash showdown over the summer and the fanfare of New York, New Jersey people he brings out is Pretty incredible. You could of course also look at Rooney or Zlatan or any other world-class player in their 30s, but that's proven to be a shot in the dark and it's not always worth your while. Next up, we have a question. Who should Leicester sign to not complete a full out flop? Well, here's the thing about Leicester. They're achieving at a level that they're capable of. To think Vardy was going to be a smash hit this year again was just kind of unrealistic. Was he world-class last year? Of course, but he is back to being the player that he's been most of his entire career and that's not his fault. The big issue though has been missing N'Golo Conte. And the reality is you can't just go out and sign a player like Conte and hope that he'll reverse your fortunes. Well, you could go poach Naby Keita, who we spoke about before from RB Leipzig, but I'm pretty sure he's not for sale at any price and he wouldn't go to a club of lesser stature even if he did leave. My advice, sell Vardy and Merez and get the most money you can get, grind out this season and then strategically spend that money to enhance five, six positions in your squad to solidify yourself in the 2017-18 season as a mid to upper mid table club like Southampton have done throughout the years. Leicester have a lot more in common with clubs like them versus Manchester United's and Chelsea's of the world. 
And our final question is, when is Luis Enrique going to start depending on La Masia? To be honest, with a team stacked with superstars in their prime, it is a crazy challenge for any young player to break through from La Masia. That said, La Masia arguably gives players the best football education in the world, so for me, it's about waiting things out, taking your chances in those tiny little cameos that you get here and there, and being adaptable. I mean, look at Sergio Roberto. This guy's played something like seven positions during his journey into the first team, and he finally made the right back position his own at age 20. 24. Interestingly enough though, in the last few years, Barca have been buying the young players they need more than they're bringing them up from the academy. The likes of Umtiti, Dina, and Denis Suarez are the squad players, not La Masia kids. And recently you've had guys like Alejandro Grimaldo leave for Benfica after not seeing a way into the team, while a guy like Sergi Samper, who was called Barca's next captain, is on loan to Granada trying to find his feet. Patience is the key, but for now, it looks more like players Barca bought are ahead of La Masia kids in the pecking order, so my guess is that we're still a year or two out from another crop of La Masia stars forcing their way into the first team. But I'm not really an expert on players coming into the first team from La Masia, so if you are a Barca expert, hit me up in the comments and educate me. So guys, that's all. Hit me up with what your team needs and make sure you follow, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys later.